on the three o'clock calendar for um, the joint hearing of human services and transportation. Um, this meeting will include the following agenda, the 3 p.m. human services and transportation, the 305 housing and human services, and the 310 human services hearings. Um, for human services, we have uh, Senator Bennett, Ms. Salucha, and myself, and hopefully we will have others by the time of decision-making. This meeting is being streamed live. And for transportation, Chair Lee, do you wish to introduce your members? Hey, good afternoon. Uh, it's myself and our Vice Chair, Senator Lorraine Inouye, and I'm sure we'll be joined by a few others in just a minute. Okay, thank you very much. So this meeting is being streamed live on YouTube in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 p.m. February 17, 2022, conference room 225 and via video conference. And a public notice will be posted on the legislator's website. Your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. Each testifier will have one minute to testify. If there is a technical glitch during your time to testify, you may have, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and we remind you that the committee has your written testimony. I will be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislator's website. We will you will find a link on the status page for the measure. And I noticed that I also have Vice Chair Les, Senator Leslie Hara joining us for this hearing. So first up, and the only bill we have for um, the joint hearing is SB 3121, relating to funding for parking for disabled persons. Creates an accessible parking special account within the Disability and Communication Access Board Special Fund, increases the state vehicle registration fee by $1 to be deposited into the accessible parking special account, requires all costs associated with the statewide parking program for persons with disabilities to be appropriated from this accessible parking special account beginning July 1, 2023. And before we proceed, I would like to apologize to the ASL interpreter for going over the pro forma um, discussion too fast. So first up, we have Kirby Shaw of DTAB in support. Do we have anybody from Disability Communication Board? I see Christine Pagano. Do you wish to testify? Can we unmute DCAB, IT? Just a second, Senator. I believe the ASO interpreter will speak for her. Okay. So um, I believe um, that this Christine Pagano, which is to testify, may we have an interpreter? The interpreter is uh, signing to her. I believe she just needs to reply and then he'll be able to speak for her. So until we have the interpreter on, I would like to note the presence of um, Senator Favela, and I saw Senator Ocasio, also for Human Services. And Hi, Chairs. Um, I'm here on behalf of DCAB. Um, this is Brian Mick. I'm the Policy and Program Development Coordinator. Okay, so thank you. Um, we are, you are here to testify about SB 3121. Are, and we do have your written testimony. Do you have anything further to add to your written testimony? 
we just, as we noted, there are um, two corrections if the bill is to move forward um, on page one and line four. Um, the year right now says 2022, that should be amended to read 2023. And on page two, line 13, um, it refers to um, section 291-31, that should actually be 249-31. Okay, thank you very much. Um, also, in, we have Tom Yamachika for Tax Foundation providing comments, and I saw Tom Yamachika. Um, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair, members of the committees. Uh, Tom Yamachika for the Tax Foundation. Uh, our testimony is limited to the special account component of the bill. Uh, we are concerned that uh, having special accounts and special accounts within special accounts is going to make it very difficult for anybody such as yourself to keep track of how much money the state has. Uh, and we uh, do not see the justification for it under the uh, current uh, statute uh, uh, framework in chapter, chapter 37 uh, to uh, justify this uh, special special fund. Yeah, okay, to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, also in support, we have Lynn Murakami Akatsuka and Gerald Silva in opposition. Anybody else online wishing to testify on SB 3121? Okay, seeing none. Members, any questions of the live witnesses? Okay, seeing none. Um, so Chair Lee, do you wish to Recess for decision making or go directly to decision making? Uh, go for it. Uh, we're kind of on a tight timeline on our end. We have uh, okay. four yeah, other we, agendas. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Chair's recommendation is to pass with the DCAB amendments, but also note in the committee report the Tax Foundation's concerns about um, having special funds within special funds, um, reducing transparency. And, um, Vice Chair, any comments, concerns, questions, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote on SB 3121. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. For the Committee on Human Services, uh, we're voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 3121 with amendments. Chair San Bernardino Ventura. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Misa Lucha. Aye. Senator Favela is excused. Aye. Oh, uh, uh, the, the vote is unanimous um, and the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Committee on Transportation, any comments? Otherwise, same recommendation, Vice Chair. Thank you for the Committee on Transportation. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3121 with amendments. Uh, Chair Lee. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Decoit. Aye. Senator Shimabukuro. Senator Shimabukuro is excused. Senator Favela. Aye. Mr. Chair, uh, this measure has been adopted. Thank you. So we are um, adjourning the three o'clock calendar and Human Services Committee. Please hang on. And Transportation Committee, we are moving to a separate Zoom link so we can get out of Human Services room. So we'll see you in just a moment. Chair, I have another, uh, Chair San Buenaventura, I'll have another hearing just for one measure and then I'm coming back, okay? Okay, thank you. So we're waiting for the Committee on Housing to Zoom in. The 305 calendar for housing. Their lead. Okay. Yeah, tell them we're ready for him.
Okay, thank you. Calling the 310 calendar for um, Committee on Human Services while we await the 305 calendar uh, joint hearing. So first up, we have SB 2161 relating to elections. First up, we have, um, which is, requires the exterior of the envelope containing the ballot to package to include instructions on how to obtain language translation services in Hawaii and certain foreign languages. First up, we have Scott Nago providing comments. Is Scott Nago present? Chair, we'll stand on our written testimony providing comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Office of Language Access and Support. Good afternoon, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, and member of the committee. The Office of Language Access uh, stand on our written testimony in support of this measure and will be available for any question the committee may have. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we also have comments from City and County of Honolulu Office of the City Clerk. And next up, we have Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights, Patricia Mac McManaman in support. Is Patricia available? Not present, Chair. Okay, moving on. Then we have Liza Ryan Gill and Catherine Chen, Hawaii Coalition for Immigrant Rights in support. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, the Hawaii Coalition for Immigrant Rights, which represents more than 25 immigrants serving in immigrant-led organizations in the state, stands in strong support um, uh, on our written testimony and will be here for any questions. Mahalo. See, I see um, housing chair present. After we finish this bill, we will recess the 310 calendar and move back to the 305. So next up, we have testifying for Common Cause, Hawaii and support. I see Good Sandy Ma. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Sandy Ma for Common Cause Hawaii. We stand in support of SB 2161. This, will, this bill will help notify every voting citizen in Hawaii of their right to notice uh, the right of language translation services and help people vote. Uh, I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you very much for hearing this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. And next up we have, no one else having um, registered to testify on Zoom. We have Hawaii Public Health and Student Support and five other individuals all in support. Questions, any members for those live testimony? Okay, seeing none, we're going to recess and go back to the 305 calendar. Recess the 310 calendar and call in the 305, oh, I'm sorry, it's Stanley, you are lead. You wanna call the 305 calendar? Yes, welcome to the um, 305 agenda for the Joint Committees on Housing and Human Services. Um, for the Committee on Housing, I see Senator Rhodes um, and Let's see. I'm not sure Drew's if anyone here. else is here. Drew is here. Oh, and Vice Chair Kanuha. Senator San Buenaventura for the Committee on Human Services. For, for the Committee on Human Services, we have Vice myself, Vice Chair Ihara, and we have Senator Acasio present. Great, thank you. Um, we have one measure on this agenda. It's Senate Bill 3368 relating to homelessness. It authorizes the issuance of general obligation bonds for the development and construction of permanent supportive housing and directs the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation to prioritize the construction of permanent supportive housing for any available federal low-income housing tax credits. Um, we have several testifiers on this measure today. So again, we're gonna ask everyone to be brief um, our first testifier is Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness with comments. Uh, good, good afternoon, Chair Chang, Chair San Bernardino Ventura, Vice Chairs and Members. Scott Moore, Shige, Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness and Chair of the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness. I'll stand on my written testimony supporting the intent, offering comments, and deferring to HBHA and HHFDC. Thank you. Thank you. Our second testifier is Department of Human Services with comments. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Committee Members, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director, Department of Human Services. The department stands on its written testimony in support of the intent of the bill, request clarification, and defers to the impacted departments and offices. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Our next testifier is DLNR with comments. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Members of the Committees. Ian Hirokawa with DLNR Land Division. The department will stand on its testimony supporting the intent of the bill and offering comments. Thank you. And be available for any questions. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next testifier is HHFDC with comments. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee, Denise Matsubara, HHFDC. We stand on our written testimony offering comments with requested uh, amendments to delete uh, item two under the purpose and section two of this bill, which requires prioritization of LIHTC or low income housing tax credits for this purpose. The QAP or criteria for LIHTC already provides an incentive for this type of projects and awards extra points uh, for projects with special needs. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, next, we have the State Procurement Office with comments. Okay, followed by Partners in Care with support. Aloha chairs, vice chairs, and members of the committees. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Uh, my name is Bob Wardlaw. I represent Partners in Care. We stand in strong support of this measure. I just want to highlight that um, the lack of landlords willing to work with our most vulnerable and difficult uh, clients make it difficult, uh, obviously, to, to house them and keep them housed. And we think this is a, a key step in alleviating that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, Catholic Charities Hawaii in support. Aloha, Chair Chang, Chair Sampono Chair. I'm Betty Lou Larson with Catholic Charities Hawaii. Um, we strongly support this bill. As you know, homelessness or ending homelessness is one of the state's main priorities. It's also a priority for many people on the streets. It always comes up high on the surveys. However, we can't do that without addressing chronic homelessness. And as Bob Noda just mentioned, it's hard to get landlords. And we never had a process before where we could successfully serve this population. Now we have Housing First for six years, very successful. But as it says, it's housing first. We need the units and this bill will provide that. We also feel that prioritization is important because usually these have been small projects like little walk-ups. So it's not the typical tax credit, you know, 80, 100 unit project. So to compete with larger projects, we feel it would be difficult. So we do need a prioritization, we feel, to really make um, some of these smart projects workable. Thank you very much for uh, hearing this bill. Thank you. Next testifier is HPHA in support. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. Uh, we stand on our testimony in support. Uh, although we're not a, uh, a homeless agency, we stand ready uh, and able to help in any matter that brings additional units into our state. Thank you. I'm here for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, we have AEAH Housing in opposition, Stanford Car Development LLC in opposition, Hawaii Lesset in opposition, Sugar Creek Capital in opposition, Shots Collaborative LLC in opposition, Lorna Holmes in support, John Kawamoto in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on SB 3368? Okay, uh, if not any questions or discussions members? Um, I actually have one question um, for the coordinator on homelessness. Um, in your testimony, you noted that ongoing funding will be required to support case management and supportive services for these individuals. How much money are we talking about? So um, just based on estimates of other supportive housing units, the city and county of Honolulu, just the case management portion for, for those contracts is about um, $800 per month per household. Um, and I think that can scale up or down depending on the number of households you project to serve. Okay, are you asking for that eight hundred dollars a month to be included in here? These are these are bonds, which are usually no, not, not necessarily. Okay. I think it's just something for the legislature to be mindful of. Is that the units is what are one piece of the picture, and um, in order for these units to eventually be utilized for supportive housing, we at some point would need to have additional supportive services that equate to about that amount layered on top of the units to provide the case management and wraparound support. Okay, thank you very much. Chair San Buenaventura, any questions for the committee? Um, no, I don't, thank you. Um, human services members, do you have any questions of those who have provided oral testimony? Uh, no, we're, we're ready to proceed. 
Okay, if not, then why don't we go into recess and we'll come back for decision making. Okay, welcome back from recess. The Joint Committees on Housing and Human Services will now be going into decision-making on Senate Bill 3368 relating to homelessness. The chairs having conferred, the recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. Um, we'll take the amendments from the Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness to include supportive housing units for other vulnerable populations that do not meet the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development definition of homelessness, such as individuals exiting correctional facilities, individuals with severe mental illness or developmental disabilities, and individuals stepping down from a higher level of care in institutional settings. And the committee report will also be noting the need for ongoing funding to support case management and supportive services for individuals with acute physical and behavioral health needs placed into supportive housing um, at the rate of $800 per household per month, as was stated during the oral testimony. We'll also be taking the um, HHFDC amendment to remove item two from the purpose section and under section two to request to that the bill require that HHFDC shall consider these applications for LIHTC but not give priority to them. And then finally, the state procurement office's proposed amendment to delete their exemption from chapter 103D on page three, section three, line 16 to 19. Any questions or discussion members? Okay, so again, for the committee on housing, the recommendation will be to, oh, and we'll also defect the date. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, and so for the committee on housing, for Senate Bill 3368, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. On the Committee on Housing, Chair's recommendation is to, on SB 3368 is to pass with amendments. Chair Chang? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Excuse Senator Rhodes? Aye. And Senator Favela. Looks like Senator Moriwaki and Favela are excused. Chair, you have three ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Okay, so for human services, same recommendation. Um, chair votes aye. Vice Chair Ihara for the vote. We're voting on the recommendation to pass uh, Senate Bill 3368 with amendments. Uh, chair Buenaventura, Sandra Ventura. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Castillo. Aye. Senator Misalucha is excused. Uh, Senator Favela is excused, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. There being no further business for the 305 agenda, this hearing is adjourned. We call in the 310 calendar for the Committee on Human Services. Next up is SB 2395 relating to coercive control, adds litigation abuse to the factors a court may consider in finding that person illegally abused, harmed, punished, or frightened another individual. So first up, we have, excuse me, for 23.95, we have Department of Attorney General providing comments. Hey, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members. Uh, I'm Deputy Attorney General Chuck Fu Lui. Our department agrees that litigation abuse and coercive control should be considered by the court in awarding uh, custody or visitation. Our concern is that including litigation abuse within coercive control will make litigation abuse a criminal offense, which is not the intent of the bill. By adding them separately directly into 571-46 um, will achieve the same goal without the unintended consequence. Um, and that is our recommendation. Mm -hmm. I am available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, I see Mark Tom, Prosecuting Attorney's Office, providing comments. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Chair Sam Bonaventura, Vice Chair Ihara, members of the committee, Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Mark Tom for the department. Department also expresses concerns, but with suggested amendments, specifically those amendments would be similar to uh, what the AG outlined. Uh, creating a standalone offense for litigation abuse in 571-46 
um, and in turn removing litigation abuse from course of control, which is in 586-1, um, and it, avoiding it from being utilized, uh, at least in the pilot project. Uh, some of the concerns that the department has stems from um, just allowing the pilot project to play itself out, collect data. Uh, the pilot project went into effect January 1st, 2021, Act 19 from 2020, and uh, six months later, we added course of control despite um, stakeholders having a little concern with implementation. Um, the concern is just that we need to at least allow more time to collect data and figure out what works and what doesn't work for the pilot project. Department will be here for questions. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have Nancy Creedman for DBAC, Domestic Violence Action Center and Support. Yeah. Aloha, thank you so much for giving the community this opportunity to talk about an issue that we see uh, pretty uh, regularly in family court, uh, the problem of being uh, tormented and dragged through multiple unnecessary court hearings by abusive partners who are using a variety of tactics to continue their abuse. Um, is commonly seen by our attorneys in family court. It's a behavior that's a pattern. Uh, it's subtle, complex, and uh, overwhelming, frankly, for, for survivors. Our hope was that litigation abuse uh, would be considered uh, a measure, a tactic of coercive control in order to obtain a temporary restraining order. So it would be added to the list uh, we'd like to see that occur. Uh, coercive control is a new and very important way of understanding domestic violence. We have to learn as we go rather than wait for the pilot project to end. I see my time is up. Appreciate the opportunity to offer a few thoughts. I will be here for any additional inquiry. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Okay, um, no one else having registered to testify on, on Zoom. We have parents and children together providing written testimony in support, Women's Caucus of Democratic Party of Hawaii in support, AAUW of Hawaii in support, Hawaii Status State Coalition Action Against Domestic Violence, providing comments. Also providing comments, we have um, Kali, Kali Bumpo-Hopper Merrick, Dara Garland, Mara Garcia, and for the judiciary, also providing comments. Um, members, any questions of the witnesses? So um, I have a question of Nancy Creedman. Aloha, Nancy. So Aloha, you know, Aloha. thank you. Yeah. So so you know, I, I'm I'm one of the prime supporters of the pilot project and the coercive control, but. Um, I'm also hearing from the prosecutors and your testimony is you really at the very least want to add this in in the temporary restraining order as well as um, the prosecutors in fact wanted it to be added also into a determination of whether or not it's in the best interest of the child for visitation and custody purposes. Do you see yeah. that? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So Support since that. we got... Yes, so since we have um, four more years into the pilot project and we haven't gotten really good data just yet, um, I'm kind of leaning towards revisiting this next year and accepting the prosecutors and your concern, making sure it's in the TRO, making sure it's in the custody and visitation, but let's not put it in a, to the petty misdemeanor just yet until we get more data. Is that okay with you? At least hold on for another session. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily need it at this moment in the petty misdemeanor statute. I think it's okay. going to make all the difference in the world in the TRO statute and in the custody and visitation rulings that come out of family court. It's going to change uh, women and children's lives for sure. Okay, thank you very much, Nancy. Kuhn. Yeah, thank and, you. And so, so um, Attorney General's office, are you still there? Deputy AG? Well, yes. if not, hi. So um, you heard a discussion. The plan yes. is to not put it into the 586, the criminal section, but to put it into the 571, the custody visitation and the TRO section. Knowing that, do you have any other comments, um, concerns about 
this bill as amended, SB 2396. That was our recommendation as well. Okay, thank you very much. So let's thank move on then. Oh, I'm sorry, members, any questions of the, um, based upon my questions? Okay, good, so let's move on. SB 2422, which is to relate to family court, requires certain persons to immediately report a potential court claim to the family court when that person has reason to believe that a child in foster custody has suffered an injury that may arise to a court claim establishes procedures for the family court to follow when appointing a master to investigate a potential tort claim and when authorizing the filing of a tort claim on behalf of an injured child, including the opportunity for an injured child to obtain outside legal representation. First up, we have 2422. Department of Human Service, State of Hawaii, providing comments. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director, Department of Human Services. The department stands on its written testimony, providing comments and requesting clarification, as well as deferring to the judiciary. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. So next up we have um, Deputy Attorney General providing comments. Do we have the... Deputy AG. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank Please you. Please proceed. Oh. Thank you, Chair Sam Buenaventura and members of the committee for the opportunity to submit comments on the bill. I think our primary comment is our belief that there's a need for an appropriation to make sure that there are independent funds for neutral masters to carry out the purpose of the bill and I'm available for questions afterwards if necessary. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up we have for the judiciary, Andrew Park in opposition. Please proceed. Good afternoon, Chair San Buenaventura, Vice Chair Ihara, and members of the committee. My name is Andrew Park. I am a judge in the First Circuit Family Court, and I would stand on the judiciary's written testimony in opposition. I will be available if you have any questions on the matter, and I thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, no one else having registered to testify for SB 2422. We have Marilyn Yamamoto, Hawaii Family Advocacy Team in support, Dara Carlin in support, and um, and questions, um, members, on SB 2422, and I was told I forgot a whole new, I forgot a bill, which we will go back to. Chair? Yes. Chair, I've, I've registered to testify in this bill. For SB 2422. That's correct. And your name is? Steve Lane, L-A-N-E. Okay. Um, and I've submitted okay. written testimony that I'd like to supplement. Okay, I, I, okay, wait a second, Steve. So my committee clerk gave me written count, okay, with, provide me with written testimony, so please proceed. You have one minute, Mr. Lang. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. I have submitted written testimony on this bill. I'd like to supplement it just briefly with a contemporary, rather compelling example that you're probably all familiar with, and that's the case of Ariel Kaloa. Let me tell you what we know from the public record from the Department of Human Services and the police department. This six-year-old child was reported abused and starved in 2019 on multiple occasions to CPS. On July 3rd of 2019, there was a report, multiple reports made to CPS that the child had been beaten by a foster mother. In October, 2019, the child suffered a broken, broken finger. In January of 2020, she suffered a broken, key, a broken leg. Reading the key section from this protocol, when Judge Browning drafted, is that um, in the event a GAL casts a resource giver, party social worker, and or attorney becomes aware that a child may have suffered physical, emotional, or psychological injury that could be considered actionable tort, 
Said individual shall immediately inform the court in writing. I note it says shall, not may. It's a mandate. There is no indication that any of this harm, this child suffered by everybody's acknowledgement publicly was ever reported to the court by any of the mandated reporters, not once. She was six years old. She had a leg broken. She had an arm broken, her finger broken. She was reported starved and beaten repeatedly. No report made to the court. Okay, thank you very much. Um, questions, members? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move back to SB 2396. And, uh, and I would like to note that as the, the prior testimony, testi person who testified, Mr. Lane stated, I do have his written testimony and hopefully that is gonna be uploaded so that other members could see it. Okay, thank you very much. So SB 23. 96, relating to domestic abuse, specifies that any minor who resides in the same household as the victim of domestic abuse may file a petition for an order of protection of temporary restraining order. First up, we have Nancy Creedman, Domestic Violence Action Center in support. I thank you for the opportunity to talk this through. Uh, that language is erroneous and was included sort of by mistake uh, by the LRB when the ideas were being uh, devised and the bills were being drafted. We'd like to see that language uh, come out. Uh, that's on page one, line 14, 15, and 16. The real intent of the discussion by the community is to allow uh, mostly uh, women, moms, non-offending moms and non-offending dads who are obtaining restraining orders to have the children remain on the restraining order uh, because they were living in a household where abuse and torment was occurring. Uh, taking the children off the restraining order, which is routinely done, creates uh, risk, damage, harm, and threats to the um, victim and to the children. Uh, it's very important as a community that we understand when a, a, a mom is taking a protective step and obtaining a restraining order, leaving the children on the restraining order with arrangements for visitation made is very, very important. Taking the children off the restraining order puts everybody at risk. So we respectfully ask that um, the bill be amended to uh, take off the language I mentioned and then I just wanted to call your attention, page three, um, line five, it's referring to the same uh, idea and um, refers to the child as a complainant. That's uh, incorrect. So those changes would be uh, terrific and advance uh, safety for island families. Thank you so much. Okay, sounds good. Um, Next up, we have, oh, we don't have anyone else having registered to testify on SB 2396. Those providing written testimonies, AAUW of Hawaii and support, um, Hawaii State Coalition Action Against Domestic Violence providing comments, basically same comments that Nancy Creedman testified to. Um, parents and children together providing comments, in support is Kawi Bonhoeffer Merritt, Dara Garland, Carlin, and Marie, Mara Garcia. Members, any questions of Nancy Creedman? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on. So, um, hold on, let me make sure I have my DM. I, I understand, but I, I need to put in also. Okay, so next up we have 2518, which is related to deceptive trade practices, identifies gender-based pricing as a defective, as a deceptive trade practice. 
So first up on SB 2318, let me get my 2518 is um, Ma'i Ma movement of, oh, the only person my movement of Hawaii and support only written comments, affirm Hawaii and support again written comment, I mean, uh, in written testimony, comment cause Hawaii providing comments. In opposition, we have retail merchants of Hawaii, Tina Yamaki. Um, are you there? Yes. So Aloha. Tina Yamaki, please proceed. You know, we support the intent of the bill, but we also want to point out that, you know, it's not the retailers that set the pricing, it's the manufacturers. And our understanding is manufacturing of especially feminine products or um, are not, or especially personal care products are not done here in Hawaii. It's done on the mainland. So this is more of a mainland based bill aimed at manufacturers for us. What's going to happen is we're going to raise our prices because of shipping or increase in our um, employment costs and things like that. But we don't go, okay, if it's a pink razor, we're going to raise it 75 cents and it's a blue razor, it's 25 cents. It's pretty much across the board what they do. But that's not what the public is going to see. And we're scared that there's, or we anticipate there's going to be lawsuits saying that it's a deceptive practice when it's actually not. It's the manufacturers who set the price. Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much, Tina Yamaki. Next up, we have, I see Anna Kia in support. Is Anna present? Not present, Chair. And I see Arwen Revere in support. Um, please proceed. Aloha committee members. Um, my name is Arwen Revere and I'm a high school student from uh, Kailua. I stand on my written testimony in strong support of this measure. Um, I'm actually the student who brought this issue to Senator Lee's office, and I'm very passionate about ending this discriminatory practice in our state. I think that in a state where women make, um, the average woman, I'm sorry, makes only about 79% of the average man, um, this issue is really big for, for example, if you're a single mother and you have two or three daughters, it really affects more than the raw data may suggest. Um, um, and mahalo for hearing this bill and for the opportunity to testify. Um, I will be here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, no one else having registered to testify online. We have written testimony from um, they is Brown in support, Heidi Krull in support, Abby Ward in support, Laurie Shooter in support, Shoban Koad in support, Samantha Price in support, Aria Juliet Castillo in support, Sarah Mil Milianta Lappin in support, Anne Freed in support, Naneo Lowe in support. Anybody else online wishing to testify in SB 2518? Okay, members, any questions? So I have a question of Tina Yamaki. Yes. Hi, right. so basically this bill um, prevents any, any price differential solely based on gender. Mm -hmm. And your testimony is that all, as, as retail merchants, you, you do not do any gender-based pricing, but basically increase, it's solely based upon the manufacturer. And by the time of retail level, you just, there's just a standard practice. It's just a standard increase enough for the retailers to make a profit. Is that your testimony? Yes, that is correct. The base price is set by the manufacturer. What retailers add on is like the shipping costs, things that, that we cannot um, absorb. So a lot of times we pass it on to our customers as much as we can. But it's not based on gender. It's basically across the board when they do things like this. Okay. So if we limit this bill, 
to those who are, so, I mean, frankly, if we pass this bill mm -hmm. and since, okay, well, let me think about what we're gonna do about this bill. Thank, thank you. Oh, one, one other question. Uh -huh. um, does the, do retailers uh, discriminate based upon any COVID-19 pricing, I mean, vaccination status? No. No. Not that, I, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And so that could also be considered a, a potentially deceptive trade practice if it's done on a manufacturer or wholesale level. Yeah, and like I said, it's the manufacturer who sets it. So if you know they're setting that the blue, and I'm just using this out as an example, blue razors are two dollars and the pink razors are five dollars. Um, as retailers, we're not going to take a loss in selling something. So what may happen is we just don't sell those products anymore, and so that's less of a choice for people in Hawaii. Okay, so I mean, when I, I remember back in the 80s about the green M&Ms being priced specifically more because there was some kind of um, status associated with the green M&Ms. So that was determined on the manufacturer level should they decide to like segregate the green M&Ms. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that that ages me by the way. So <laughs> any other questions? Okay, seeing that we're going to move on to um, 2587. 2587, which is basically relating youth commission, requires a youth commission to appoint an executive director. First up, we have the Department of Human Services State of Hawaii providing comments. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director, Department of Human Services. The department stands on its testimony, uh, providing comments for this measure. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next up, we have Office of Youth Services providing support, I mean, in support, OIS. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Leanne Gillespie. I'm the Acting Executive Director for the Office of Youth Services. We stand on our written testimony in support. We offer comments, um, request some clarification, and defer to the Department of Human Services. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have Hawaii Youth Services Network in support. Aloha Chair, members of the committee. I'm Judith Clark, representing Hawaii Youth Services Network. We are in support of this bill. Uh, other state boards and commissions have dedicated staff to help them carry out their functions and responsibilities, and the Youth Desert Commission needs one equally. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Okay, and we don't have anyone else having registered for SB 2587. Anyone online wishing to testify on SB 2587? Okay, seeing none, we have Hawaii State Youth Commission um, providing written testimony and support. Members, do you have any questions of those who have provided oral testimony? I have a question. Okay, um, Senator Ms. Alucha. For DHS, um, Joe. Yeah, yeah. so um, in your testimony, you uh, pointed to the um, additional information that you would like as far as the, I guess, the terms of, of uh, employment, including performance evaluations. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Is there any, any existing ones for executive director positions that you can then um, provide? Because even though you alluded to that, you didn't really you know, request for an amendment of some sort. So, because 
you you um, support the intent, right? But you just need further um, information or qualification. Yes, uh, Senator Ms. Lucha, thank you for that question. Um, we are concerned about the fact that this position would more than likely be a civil service position. And then it requires, you know, uh, levels of supervision who would uh, write to the uh, evaluations, you know, so that would be one of the um, questions that needs to be addressed. Okay. All right. Um, is there, are there any similar positions within the agency that um, at least in later on in the implementation could be uh, looked at as a template? That we would have to look into. Okay, thank you, Chair. Just wanted to note that. Okay, thank you. So um, I have a question, uh, Mr. Campos, relating to what Senator Ms. Salucha and your written testimony alluded to. Um, should we pass this bill? Can't uh, Department of Human Services um, provide, create administrative rules defining the duties of the executive director? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, that we will need to uh, work on. Um, you know, if this goes fast, then we would have to work within the confines of the bill. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, seeing that, we're going to move on. Um, SB 2676, making an appropriation for the Office of Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. Appropriates funds to the Office of Long-Term Care Ombudsman for five. FTE Ombudsman Program Specialist Positions. So first up, we have Carolyn Cadillao, Office of Aging, providing comments. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. Yes, EOA supports the intent of this measure and is providing comments. The Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program is required by both federal and state law to protect the human and civil rights of residents in all long-term care settings. Uh, currently, we have one long-term care ombudsman for the whole state, and we have some contracted part-time ombudsmen on our neighbor islands. States of similar size have between 5 to 13 full-time staff. The administration's budget includes two full-time equivalents, and our plan is that these two would be placed on the neighbor islands. We support the additional funding for these positions, provided that its enactment does not reduce or replace priorities in the administrative budget. And I'm available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next up, we have, well, I see Audrey Suga Nakagawa for AERP providing support. Please um, proceed. Good afternoon, uh, Chair San Buenaventura, members of the committee. I'm Audrey Suga Nakagawa, um, Advocacy Director for AARP Hawaii, and we stand in strong support of this measure. You know, having adequate staffing for this office is long overdue. And, you know, with the pandemic, it really heightened the awareness of our vulnerability of our residents in these long term care facilities and care homes. And truly, the ombudsman. Um, serves as the advocate for these residents and really is the eyes and ears for them. So we really appreciate having these positions staffed so that, you know, the, the residents could have quick access to a spec, an ombudsman to assist them uh, to hear their complaints and share their concerns and making sure that they're properly addressed. And so having the, being an island state, this is even more imperative that we have one at every island and additional uh, locations as well for Oahu as well as on the Big Island. So thank you very much for the opportunity to testify in strong support of this measure. Okay, thank you. So before we proceed, um, I would like to excuse the ASL interpreter because no one else has um, registered the need for an ASL interpreter. And I would like to thank you for your services. Thank you. Um, Next up, we have John McDermott, State Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program in support. John. Good afternoon, um, Senator Buenaventura and committee members. Um, as uh, you just heard from Audrey, this really has been um, a problem for a long time. We started out as a demonstration project in 1975. We became federal law in 1978, and we became state law in 1979. 
So that means that our neighbor island Kapuna have been waiting 43 years for their own long-term care ombudsman. Um, my job is to advocate for anybody in a long-term care facility statewide, but because we are an island uh, state, it's very difficult. And during COVID, it was pretty much impossible to fly over there. Uh, and families were not allowed to visit. So nobody really knew what was happening with their mom or dad. And um, certainly some people did not get the care that they needed or required. So we feel that this is a long time coming and um, we hope that you'll support it. And I appreciate your giving me this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. McDermott. Okay, next up, I see Kathleen Wyatt in support. Please proceed. To unmute her. Um, I have an example of the reason why we need an ombudsman on every island. I had a family member that said that she, her, her mother is in a very expensive, very popular uh, care home or assisted living home. And she goes in there frequently. And every time she goes in, the mother's tray is sitting there uneaten. And then the CNA comes in and takes the tray away. So the, the daughter asks, why it, didn't she eat? Well, she didn't want to. Well, the woman is legally blind and she needs assistance. She's totally bedridden without, without, uh, without help to, to get out. So this keeps happening and the, and the daughter keeps talking to the, to the caregivers and, and nothing seems to change. So without being able to contact an ombudsman, especially if it's on another island, um, her mother's in danger of losing weight and, and declining rapidly. She's had her in two, two other places as well. This was the, uh, the best one highly recommended by everybody and very expensive. So without the voice, without the ombudsman to be the voice of this family, things okay, will keep you. on. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else having registered to testify in SB 2676. Um, what we do have is we have written testimony from the Budget of Finance providing comments, Hawaii County Office of Aging and Support Maui County Office of Aging and Support, Kukua Council and Support, Pabea Policy Advisory Board for Elder Affairs and Support. Um, we have a, five individuals, Lynn Nitani, Dolores Foley, Mae Fuji, Mae Fuji, John Tomoso, Diana Bethel, um, Ben Fremont, an ombudsman for Maui County and Support also, all in support. Jamel Dugula, Oahu Long-Term Ombudsman and Support, Sharon Young, Ger Gerald Allens, Esther Ueda, Lorda Schubert, Barbara Craig, Wanda Anai Onishi in support, Linda Dorset, Linda Muralid, Muralid Haran, Margaret Perkinson, Dan Gardner, Rick Tabor, Marsha Kimura, all in support. Um, anybody online wishing to um, testify on SB 2676? We have no opposition. Okay, seeing that members, any um, questions of the live witnesses? Okay, Senator Ms. Lucia. Just wanted to clarify from Office of Aging. Caroline. Hi, I'm on. It's just my video won't come on. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, there. Okay, just wanted to some clarity. So you have one right now. Correct. Your budget actually calls for two. The governor's budget and then yeah. here in this bill you're asking for five right so total if all of you're asking for is eight a total of eight for the entire state right so and you know um albeit we do have a surplus but there's a lot of competing interest if for instance uh, just from a from what you know what would be the minimum that we would need in order to be in compliance with some federal guidelines. Thank because you for the, being the most, the ideal. Right. Thank you, Senator. Yes, the um, ideal to be in compliance um, is the five full-time FTEs. I did go in when we developed our budget request back in last summer. And we didn't know the state of affairs at the time. That's why I went in for two. But five is ideal to meet the current needs that we have within our state. So since you already have one, right? That's Mr. McDermott. So 
at the minimum, we would need four more. Is that correct? Uh, actually, five plus the one we have now. So total of six. Okay, so a total of six yes. at the very minimum. Right. Instead of the eight. Right. Okay. All right. Just wanted some clarity on that. I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Okay. okay, any other um, questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on. SB 2700, relating to early childhood registry, requires its staff of licensed and registered early childhood programs to annually provide specific information to the Department of Human Services Early Childhood Workforce Registry. Requires a report to the legislature, makes an appropriation. First up, we have Department of Human Services, State of Hawaii, providing comments. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Joseph Pampos, Deputy Director, Department of Human Services. The department stands on its written testimony um, in, in appreciation of the intent of the bill and providing comments. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, I see Kathleen Algar, Hawaii Children's Action Network speaks in support. Aloha, Chair Sunwood Ventura, Vice Chair Ihar, and committee members. I'm Kathy Nogar with HCAN Speaks. I thank you for the opportunity to testify in strong support of this measure. You have my written testimony. I just wanted to highlight um, kind of the what the immediate need is for, um, uh, for the registry. Um, at this moment in time, we really don't know who or how many folks are working in our early care and learning um, sector. Uh, this is an area that has been, you know, greatly impacted by the pandemic. We're receiving a lot of federal funding to help increase and boost and, and, and rebuild child care and early learning and updating our registry and providing uh, the registry to have the capabilities to be able to do things like not have to submit on paper um, your, uh, your education or accreditation, being able to check in real time um, uh, somebody's um, experience, all of those things would be a huge lift in order to um, help us meet the, the, the needs and the goals of our community. So we hope that you're able to support this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Hawaii Ch Early Childhood Educator Excellence and Equity Project, Perry Luck, in support. Please proceed. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of this bill, Senate Bill uh, 2700. I just want to um, also say that how critical this is because when we learn about our early childhood workforce and have more comprehensive data, we can better support those who are caring for our children. And we also can better support um, the informa information that goes to the Department of Human Services. So I stand on my testimony. Thank you so much for the opportunity to opportunity to do so. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Vivian Ito for um, Early Childhood Action Strategy and Support. Please proceed. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and other committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of SB 2700. You have uh, ECAS's written testimony, but I just wanted to take a moment to underscore the fragility of our childcare system right now and the need for good quality data about our childcare workforce to help inform the development of strategies and solutions to rebuild and strengthen childcare in our state. The childcare workforce has always suffered from chronically low wages and turnover issues, and the pandemic has only worsened conditions with professionals leaving the field in significant numbers and programs facing one of the most dire of hiring situations across all employment sectors. We've lost capacity in our childcare programs to serve children and families, and we can't begin to improve the situation without addressing workforce issues. But we need good local comprehensive data to do so. The bill before you is critical to improving the collection and quality of workforce information, and we ask for your support in passing this measure. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and please know I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we don't have any other um, people who have registered to testify on SB 2700. We have Earth Executive Office on Early Learning providing comments, Budget and Finance providing comments, um, Alfred Castle, an executive director providing support. And we also have Patch in support, AAUW of Hawaii in support, Early Learning Board in support of Firm Hawaii in support. And um, 
Barbara DeBarshir in support, Ellen Paul in support, Liza Ryan Gill in support, Morena Jameson in support, and Freed in support, Naneo, Naneo Lalo in support. Um, and I apologize for those people whose names I butchered. But anybody else online wishing to testify on SB 2700? Members, any questions? Senator Ms. Alucha. Um, I'm very much, oh, this is for DHS. Yes, yeah, Senator. Okay. okay, so I'm very much in support of this measure. But if you can please address um, DHS's ability to safeguard the privacy of the folks who would be participating in the data collection. Sure, Senator, thank you for the question. Um, one of the issues that we do bring up in our testimony is that we would want to ensure that the uh, data available is in aggregate form uh, to ensure that we protect the privacy of the uh, personal information. In addition, uh, we would put together, you know, um, systems and rules to make sure that doesn't happen uh, where we would release that information. I also have uh, Dana Luca, who's our child care program specialist uh, director on the uh, Zoom call. And um, I'll ask Dana if she can uh, go into greater detail on that. Dana. Okay, so um, we've got your written testimony, um, Department of Human Services. And I'm just really cognizant on our hard stop in 15 minutes if we want to pass any of these bills today. So That's okay. Please, let thank me you, Chair. One minute. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay, good. Let's move on. Um, SB 2810, re re relate to homelessness, requires the governor's coordinate on homelessness to collect and maintain a database of private property owners who give prior consent for homeless service providers to enter an owner's private property for purposes of administering homeless services to a homeless individual located on that private property requires a report to the legislator, exempts homeless service providers from civil and criminal liability that may result from the administration of homeless services and appropriate funds. First up, we have Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness providing comments. Scott good, good, good afternoon, Chair. I'll stand on my written testimony with comments. Thank you. Okay, next up, I have Hawaii Association for Justice, Evan Oe, in, in opposition. Uh, Aloha Chair, Sam Bonaventura, Vice Chair Ihara, member of the committee. My name is Evan Oe on behalf of the Hawaii Association for Justice, or HAJ. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in opposition, uh, citing our concerns with the broad immunity from civil liability, and criminal liability granted under this bill. Uh, we'll be available for any questions. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Nobody else having registered to testify in SB 2810. We have um, written testimony from Budget and Finance providing comments, Department of Human Services providing comments, Hawaii Psychological Association providing support. Anybody else online wishing to testify in SB 2810? Members, any questions? Okay, seeing that, moving on. SB 2887, relating to Department of Human Services. Appropriate funds for the operating budget of the Department of Human Services for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 requires the Department of Human Services to make any and all efforts available each year to fully fund all programs relating to homelessness. First up, we have the Department of Human Services providing comments. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Joseph Campos, Deputy Director, Department of Human Services. The Department stands on its written testimony and appreciation of the intent of the bill offering comments and also deferring to the Hawaii Public Housing Authority and the Department of Transportation. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, next up, we have Governor's Coordinator of Homelessness providing comments. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, Stand my testimony supporting the intent of the measure, and if the measure proceeds, request that it not adversely impact or replace um, priorities in the executive budget. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I see Department of Budget and Finance providing comments. County of Hawaii Office of Housing and Community Development in support. St. Michael Archangel Church, Tailor Kona in support all written. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 2887? Questions, members? Okay, seeing none, we're moving on. 
SB 3201, related to nonprofit organization, clarifies the GET exemption for unrelated trade or business activities of nonprofit organization. First up, we have Department of Taxation providing comments. Go tax. Uh, yes, Chair. Jonathan White on behalf of the Director of Tax will stand on our written testimony providing comments on the measure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have Hawaii Alliance of Nonprofit Organizations and Support. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Chair Sanbuan of the Ventura, Vice Chair at Mahara Committee members. This is Lisa Mariamu from Hano. Uh, just, we strongly support this bill and um, just wanted to make a few points. You know, this, this move in this bill, what this bill proposes, it actually achieves conformity with federal law at the moment. Uh, federal law exempts um, tax for fundraising revenue, but the current state law does not. This also allows for conformity between how donations are treated from individual donors as opposed to fundraising revenue. At the moment, fundraising revenue is taxed, donations are not. And then finally, nonprofits are taxed twice on this. So they pay, if they're having an event and they procure goods and services for the event, they're paying tax on that. And then they're again being taxed on the revenue that they make through this event, through their events. We're just really in strong support. We are looking for ways for nonprofits to secure revenue to actually diversify their funding sources. So again, we're in strong support. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Judith Clark, Hawaii Youth Services Network and support. Aloha Chair, members of the committee. Hawaii Youth, I'm Judith Clark for Hawaii Youth Services Network. We're in strong support of this bill. Uh, we are in full agreement with the testimony that Hano has just provided. The GET paid on fundraising events takes away funds that would have been spent on the nonprofit's mission and services. Uh, by passing this bill, you can actually reduce nonprofit reliance on uh, state contracts and grants and aid because they will be more capable of raising their own funds from other sources. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have University of Hawaii focus um, and support. Not present, have, no, no, there's no Chaslyn, Nicole, Nicole Kapua, or Nalani. Okay, next we have Tax Foundation of Hawaii providing comments. Tanya Machika. Not present, Chair. Okay, also those testifying, um, providing written testimony, we have Hawaii Forest Industry Association, um, Alan Johnson, Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition and Support, Kelly Foundation and Support, Hawaii State Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Support, HT Hayashi Foundation and Support. Samaritan Counseling Center, Hawaii in support, Aloha United Way in support, um, Queen's Health Systems in support, Big Brothers, Big Sisters in support, Focused in support, Parents and Children Together in support, White Children Action Network Speaks in support, Hawaii Public Health Institute in support, Molokai Arts Center in support, Outrigger Du Kahanamoku Foundation in support, anybody else online wishing to testify in SB 3201. Questions, uh, members of the written, of those who have provided oral testimony. Okay, seeing none, um, may we go on to break room for decision making. Recalling the 310 calendar for human services for decision making for SB 2161, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. We're going to accept the Office of Elections change in date, accept the HCIR language to add a section stating that nothing herein exempts or supplants the requirements of Section 203 of White Federal Voting Rights Act. Um, what, any comments, questions, concerns, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. We're, we're voting on uh, for the Committee on Human Services recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2161 with amendments. Chair San Buenaventura. Aye. For, uh, 
Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Misalucha? Aye. And Senator Favela is excused. Recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you very much. So for SB 2395, we are going to accept the prosecutor's amendments, um, basically what they said in the written testimony on page 2, line 10 to 12, and 1 through 19 on the next page, remove litigation abuse from HR 5, the chapter 586 of the HRS and insert into 571, which refers to custody and visitation. Um, and also add in litigation abuse into the temporary restraining order um, statute. Any comments, questions, concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the with, vote. With the uh, absence of Senator Favela, any recommend uh, reservations, objections to the recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2395 with amendments. Hearing none, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 2396, we're gonna accept the, um, we're gonna accept the Domestic Violence Center's oral testimony that they did not intend to allow a minor to have separate standing from the parent, the abused parent. And basically we are going to pass it with amendments on page one, line 16 to 17, remove the have standing to file and insert the language which will not be compelled by the court um, to be removed from or to file an order of protection. And basically, and on page three, remove the word complainant who is on line five. Other than that, any comments, questions, or concerns? Okay, seeing none, vice chair for the vote. We're, uh, we're voting with all members present. We're voting on the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2396 with amendments. Any reservations, objections? The recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 2422. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I have, Senator Vavella, I have you recorded as an I um, since I recognize you as present. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator Vavella. Okay, for SB 2422, relating to family court, Chair's recommendation is to pass with. With amendments, we are going to remove um, from page three, line 12, eight lines 18 to 20, and page four, line, line 10 to 21, and the remainder of section two. Remove from page two, lines 11 to 16, and add a blank appropriation. And um, I just want to make sure on, yeah, I did that. Okay, um, and on page three, basically remove line 12. Any comments, questions, concerns? Okay, seeing none, vice chair for the vote. Any reservations or objections to the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2422 with amendments? Hearing none with all members present, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on, oh, uh, yeah, on page 24, um, excuse me, for 2518, Chair's recommendation is to defer that until the next hearing. Uh, there is work to be done to ensure that it does not penalize the retail merchants who just pass on what the out-of-state manufacturer passes on to them as costs. So we're going to look at the language. So for SB number 2587, Chair's recommendation is to pass it as is and add in the committee report a request for Department of Human Services to create administrative rules or amend existing rules to define the duties of the executive director and I'm also going to note that according to their, the WAM info briefing, that there is a vacant position in OIS that could be used for this purpose. Any comments, questions, and concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. 
Any reservations, objections to the recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2587 unamended? Recommendation is adopted. Okay, so for SB 2676, um, we are gonna pass this with amendment and we're gonna add in a section that the number of positions stated herein is to ensure at least five positions inclusive of the positions requested in the EOA budget. Um, any comments, questions, and concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2676 with amendments? Otherwise, I will cast an aye vote for all members present. A recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 2700, um, we're gonna add in a defect date. We are also gonna put in technical non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. In the committee report, um, we are going to state that VHS requests an effective date to be later than December 31st, 2022. And, oh, I'm sorry. On the actual bill itself, we are gonna add a sentence in section two that the data collected not include first and last names pursuant to the Department of Human Services testimony. Any comments, questions, and concerns? Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. I am also gonna add in the committee report that the Department of Human Services work with the Attorney General's office to create rules to ensure the privacy for those submitting data. Any comments, questions, and concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Or with all members of the Human Services Committee present, any reservations or objections to the recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2700 with amendments? Otherwise, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, so for SB 2810, um, Chair's recommendation is to defer this in indefinitely. Substantial problems with the bill right now, as drafted. Okay, next um, for SB 2887, Chair's recommendation is to pass it as is, and I am going to note the blank um, appropriation. We're going to blank out the appropriation amounts because the SMA says that the calculations do not add up. Um, so is that a as is, or was, are you amending it to blank it out? Right, or? We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna amend this because okay. um, all right. blank out all appropriations. Sorry, any comments, questions, and concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2887 with amendments? Hearing none, the recommendation is adopted. So for SB 3201, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any comments, questions, and concerns? Okay, seeing none, for the vote, sorry. In, in, any reservations or objections to the recommendation to pass Senate Bill 3201 unamended? Yes. Hearing none, the, rec hearing none, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you very much. We are adjourned.